Welcome and thanks for checking out the Hub Word at Hubbard United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Lauren Hauger and I'm just so delighted that you've decided to join us today. The Hub Word is designed to offer an abbreviated worship experience for those of you who might not have enough time to watch an entire service, but you still want to hear the Word of God each week. If you are in the Park Rapids area, I would love to invite you to join us on Sundays at 9 a.m. or you can also join us on our live stream at HubbardUMC.org. You know what? Prior services can also be viewed on our website and on our YouTube channel, so I hope you can check those out as well. Again, we are just so thrilled that you've decided to join us, and I hope that you are blessed by this week's message. was beautiful. Good morning. My name is my name is Dave Tolkey and I'll be leading the uh, reading the scriptures this morning. The first scripture is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5 through 7 from the New International Version of the Bible. Hear these words of Moses as he stands before the nation and instructs them to hear what God has for them. But more than that, to remember. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lay down and when you stand up. The second reading is from the NIV also, and this is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 3 through 9. Then he, Jesus, told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, and there it prospered as a crop. Some 160 or 30 times the amount that was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, if you had one page out of the Bible that, you know, you all of a sudden, wow, the house is on fire and you got to run out. And so you got to grab one page of the Bible on the way out because you can't hardly get it all. What page would you take with you? Okay, John 3.16. You know, I thought about that and I go, hmm, you know, I might want to take, um, you know, the Ten Commandments. And I thought, oh, no. John 3.16 came to mind. Some of the poetry and psalms. And I thought, well, you know, Jesus' parables, probably they're, they're really good too. So, you know, I'd be kind of stuck. Truthfully, I might end up um, in trouble because I'd be standing there going, hmm, I don't know which page to take. <laughs> you know, for some, you know, it's maybe not a big thing because you have the Bible in your heart through studying scripture, through reading it, through seeing scripture on your phone or on the television or in other books that you've read or perhaps books that people have written for you. But indeed, you know, we were indeed created for this. We were created for this, to be reshaped, to find times where the Bible really comes finally to life. And the, really the only way you can do that is spend some time with it. You know, just spending some time with it. Within our physical and our mental and spiritual bodies, you know, we are created to reform, reshape, to change, to meet the needs of that current day, and then adapt to the future. The Bible's been around for a long time. It's kind of amazing, you know. I don't really see too many books that, you know, have managed to make it through history and that a lot of people have in their homes and in hotel rooms and around that you can generally put your hands on a Bible somewhere. The sad part of it is that we don't always read it. You know, it kind of becomes something that you just kind of hang on to. So why is it that when we decide to kind of redecorate our internal castle to be that better person, it's kind of like that New Year's resolution that has its wonderful first few days, but then kind of lapses into daily reality. You know, getting shaped from the inside out, that takes some time, it takes a little effort. But, you know, the good news is you don't have to do it all at once, you know. It's amazing when, as children, we can begin our Christian journey. 
But some people begin that journey quite late in life. But the words of Scripture still have that ability to touch our life, to reshape it, to find that new meaning in there. And certainly when something important is found, treat it like a precious nugget. Write it down, because you never know when you want to grab it. Put it in your billfolder first. Then you won't have to, you'll have, probably have it with you. Although yesterday I lost my phone for a while. And hmm, that's a whole nother story. But, you know, sometimes we do lose our way for a while. And so we need to see it regularly, hear it regularly, and add it to that internal pot of gold. You know, digging for buried treasure in the scripture is actually kind of fun. It's probably the most challenging word game out there, you know, of digging around and going deeper and really thinking rather than, oh, wow, I, it's something I can't understand. It's beyond me. Of looking at it and going, you know, I don't have to understand all of it. But what is speaking to me today? What does make sense? What idea is Jesus trying to send me today? You know, Pastor Lauren has been posting with the Friday announcements a weekly study guide, which can help you get started on some of that. Because indeed, you know, sometimes people will start and say, I'm going to read the Bible this year, and they just sit down and they read it. And, you know, in my lifetime, I've done that a couple times. It isn't the most rewarding way to read the Bible, I can tell you that. <laughs> it can be kind of hard, you know, and then you're just reading it. You aren't necessarily taking it in and helping it gain meaning in your life. So, you know, I found my, personally my um, enhanced understanding by doing it together in groups or talking about scripture or listening to sermon messages and then going home and digging a little deeper into it. You know, in our current era of life, we have many options. You know, we can actually sit down with a book. We can pull it down uh, from the Internet. We can have an audio book. There's many people that have written um, segments about um, their scholarly studies on the Bible. So that can help us reach beyond what we can understand. And, you know, that's one of the ways that we can participate in God's reshaping by really digging into the scripture and that nugget of gold that we find there, because there are many, many good nuggets that can help shape our lives from the inside out. And that is a wonderful feeling. When we stir together God's wisdom along with what the eyes see and the ears hear, we begin to feel that excitement of discovery. Isn't it fun to read through a book and you know, maybe about halfway through, you're kind of going, oh, I think I know who done it. I think I know. What I really love is when I'm wrong. <laughs> I get a little further in the book, and oh, shoot, the author has taken a different track, and the person I thought was a villain is not, you know. Well, you know, Jesus used stories, parables within the Bible to help people understand them. You know, his first disciples, they had a huge learning curve going on there. And, you know, they really had a hard time understanding, and they were right there with Jesus. So don't feel bad when you don't quite get it. You know, they had a lot of questions, as we do. And, you know, it's okay to have questions. In fact, it's important to have questions and to be puzzled and be resistant to the change that we feel within us. To think about it, is this, is this good? Is this right? Is this with Jesus? You know, he used stories when he spoke to the farmers. Casting of seeds on the soil and stories that spoke to the business people. He, he told stories that had meaning to individuals. And you might say, well, you know, that was so long ago that it can't hardly have meaning to me today. But, you know, Jesus lived with the people. He understood their deepest needs. And indeed, you know, as we embrace those teachings of Jesus, we have every reason to be encouraged that we can get it. You know, maybe we're not out farming, but if you ever grow a plant 
Or, you know, if your green thumb is pretty discolored, you know, maybe business kinds of things and working with people and how to carry on a business transaction makes sense to you. Well, you're going to find plenty of that within the Bible. How to manage money, how to manage your life, how to work with others. They're all there to help shape our path. You know, there are times you might say, well, I'm not ready yet. I don't want to go the direction that I think Jesus wants me to go. But Jesus will equip you. He provides you the tools, just like he provided for the first disciples that went out. When they began their ministries, you know, they had basically first lost their leader that they thought was going to be around for a long, long time. But, you know, they had been called. And they got together and they went out to see the people. And that is true for us today. We meet a lot of people here in church, out in community, spending time with family. So begin listening and seeing and acting in faith. Find ways to serve. Being that Christian presence is part of our reshaping. It also helps shape other people. One of the personal experiences I had with that is several years ago, I served as part of Storm Camp. Now, some of you um, here in this church uh, probably also served as service to others in rural Minnesota. It was held at Northern Pines, Northern Pines Camp, and I know several men and women from the Hubbard Church served as tool guys. They were kind of fun. You know, I served first as a driver and then later as their camp nurse. But initially as a driver, I was part of a team of workers to go out to the job site. And, you know, this was kind of a big learning curve for me. But one of the youth was in charge of the project for the day, you know, and we were doing things like construction and um, oh, tearing apart things and putting them back together or weeding in gardens or, you know, a wide variety of things, painting, some things that were brand new to people, they've never done them before, and some of the storm campers that had been there previously they actually had some thoughts and ideas about, you know, what to do, which was awesome. You know, as an adult, I thought I would be one of the wise ones. After all, I had a few years there. Not a lot of construction experience, but I did know how to hammer a nail and, and you know, run a measuring tape. So I thought, well, I'm good. Well, you know, the youth person was in charge, and as an adult, we were expected to be kind of that person that just kind of made sure no one was doing something too silly, um, which sometimes we accomplished that and sometimes we didn't. But that's some other stories that I can tell you at coffee. <laughs> um, but, you know, each member of the team was given an assignment by the youth worker. Generally, you know, this was kind of a different experience. So generally, the youth didn't necessarily know what in the world am I supposed to do with this adult they knew how to assign the other team members, but they didn't know what to do with the adult. Is it okay if I kind of give them the job nobody else wants? You know, is that okay? Should I give them something really easy to do? Because, you know, after all, they're a little older and maybe a little frail. Um, you know, that was kind of a, a big deal of trying to figure out, was it okay to assign this person? So it was a challenge for all of us that were there. We were all being shaped and reshaped. And so as they were shaping and reshaping me, I was shaping and reshaping them. You know, when I think of God's kingdom, God's people working together as intended, I often think of Storm Camp as an example of heaven on earth. You know, certainly there were moments. <laughs> didn't start out that way. You know, by the time I was working as a driver, I had raised my children through their teen years. So, you know, I would admit, and they know this, I'm not telling tales out of school, but I was kind of teen phobic by the time we made it together through those teen years. So um, my children weren't different than any other teens, but, you know, if you as a parent have already been through that or you're facing that, it's a kind of a different period of time. There's a lot of reshaping going on. And so certainly, you know, 
during this experience that worked out, kind of reshaped me in rethinking how I felt about young people in general, but also how I felt about myself and what my call might be. It was that feeling of rightness and hope for the future. We were actually finding ourselves. We tend to develop our health and our inner beauty, our identity, to be confident in God's love. And so we can be that person and that present that, help, that just kind of helps others find Jesus it also helps us find people that sometimes we would otherwise avoid and say, well, I don't know if I really want to go there or want to do that. I would encourage you to step out. You know, if you have the opportunity to serve with um, young children, like through a Bible school or a Sunday school, or maybe reading for children at, um, at school, listening to children read to you, um, spend time with youth, you know, the... Those are wonderful experiences. Sometimes challenging, but they are wonderful. When we experience things fully, our moral awareness um, does grow. We value people. We value our earth, justice, kindness. We serve humbly with our neighbors in the formation of the first perfect kingdom on earth. You know, if we ever thought about heaven on earth, that would be the time. So as we conclude this time together, you know, God has planted seeds, but it's going to be up to us to water them. Amen.